In this repair video, we're going to be working on a 2005 Mercedes-Benz key fob that came in for repair. This is the one with the triangle panic button. Success rate, repairability-wise, very low. Very low success rate. I've worked on so many of the triangle-shaped panic button Benz key fobs, and almost always the fob is a no-fix. Now, the customer mailed the fob over because the lock button is not working. The fob itself is working. Unlock button is working. The trunk button is working, the panic button is working, and the customer is able to turn the vehicle on, but the lock button, which is this button right here, is not working. So I thought, great, maybe the button is not good, we're going to change the button, and we should be able to fix the problem. If unlock is working, and the customer is able to turn the vehicle on, it means the fob is working, but just the lock button is not working. So I took the fob apart, and taking the fob apart, this one in particular, is not easy. We remove this one, we remove this one. By default, initially, those are secured like a rock. We have to use some force to take them out, and then we have to cut through the key and take it apart, like you see here. And the motherboard is right here. Let's go over the board. I want to show you what was done and why this board is deemed a no-fix. Lewis Rossman has been fighting for the right to repair for how long? And I made a video a long time ago. People always ask me, what do you think about right to repair? What do you think about the right to repair? I did a video a long time ago. I said, it's a waste of time. You're not going to go anywhere. You can fight as hard as you want. Right to repair is going nowhere. And the reason we were not able to fix this fob is because of a part that we cannot get. I do not even know what that part is. Let me show you what's going on. I was debating, should I do a video on this one or should I work on four Nintendo Switches that we got in today? We have one here, we have one here. This one looks like it's an OLED switch. And we have, actually we have uh, two OLEDs. Yeah, we have two OLEDs and two regular ones. We'll work on them tomorrow. Almost time to go home, and I thought, let me do this video before we call it off for the day. Let's go under the microscope. We have an unlock button right here. We have a trunk button right here. We have the lock button, and we have the panic button right here. Panic button is working. Unlock is working. Trunk is working, but lock is not working. What's the first thing that comes to mind when you have a button that's not working? Button is faulty. So I grabbed another button. I soldered another button right here. You can tell. I checked on the pins. Everything is nice, better than factory. And right here also. And still the same issue. The fob is still not working, or the lock button is still not working. So. What I did is I went over to this chip. I do not even know what that chip is. I went online to look at Maxwell 711021. I see a couple of people online are asking about the chip. There's no information what's inside the chip, if it contains any serialization, if it contains any firmware, uh, if it's needed to work for that specific vehicle. We do not know. We also have another chip here. I was not able to get any information on that chip as well. I do not know what those chips are for, how they work, or I do not know what those chips do. So what I did after replacing the button and finding out that replacing the button did not fix the problem, I thought maybe the fob dropped and maybe one of the solder balls under the chip, either this one or this one, got loose or cracked or whatever the case may be, and that's why only the lock button is not working. I reflowed the Maxwell chip, and I reflowed the AFL chip. If you do not know what reflowing means, I apply flux, and then I heat up the chip to a point where solder under it melts, and then I tap on the chip, it moves forward, and then it pulls back. That's how you reflow a chip in case you have a cracked joint under the chip, or you have a connection, a loose connection under the chip. Reflowing by applying flux and hot air will make the solder balls connect again. So I reflowed both chips, I tried again, same issue. 
Now, one thing you have to keep in mind is this fob is already functional. You do not want to make it worse. You do not know if the customer has another fob. You do not want the customer to come back and tell you, I was able to turn my vehicle on and now I'm not able to turn it on. So by reflowing those chips, we are taking a risk. But that's why we have our terms. Maybe the customer will not be able to turn the vehicle on anymore. Maybe the customer will not be able to unlock or whatever the case may be. I was super careful and we reflowed both chips without any issues. Anytime we have a risky job like this, where the risk is greater than fixing the fob or fixing the device, I usually avoid it. But in this case, I was careful. I applied flux, hot air, reflowed the chips, tried again, unlock is working, trunk is working, panic is working, but the lock button is still not working. What's going on? So I did some measurements. I wanted to figure out why the lock button is not working, and I thought that maybe we have light at the end of the tunnel. Anytime I see light at the end of the tunnel, I continue working on a device. If I do not see a light at the end of the tunnel, I just give up on the device. I do not waste my time because we have 700 devices in the shop here that we need to fix. So wasting more than 10, 20 minutes on a specific device where I do not see light at the end of the tunnel. Next, we go next. This one here, I was optimistic that we can fix it. I spent some time on this fob and I did some measurements. I'll tell you what I did. We're going to put the motherboard inside the housing. We have the battery here. I want the fob to have power. And I want to show you what I did. Very important information. Do not skip. You need to listen to this. So after probing every single point on that board and having a donor board to compare to, a good working donor board, I'll tell you what I found out. Now, if we look at the trunk button, let's start with the trunk button. And I've probed every single point on this fob. If we measure voltage here, we have 3.0 volts. When I press on the button, voltage goes down to 0 volts and then back up to 3 volts. That's what happens when you press a button. If we measure here, I'm reading 3.0 volts. If I press on that button, voltage will go down to 0 volts and then back up to 3 volts. And if you notice, if you look here, the connection of the unlock button is going where? Follow the line, follow the line, follow the line. It's going right here to the Maxwell 711021. The connection of the trunk button is going where? Same thing. It's the second line. One is for the unlock button and one is for the trunk button. And both of them are going to the Maxwell chip. Now, if you look here at the lock button, and I want to measure the lock button just like we did with the unlock and trunk button. So let's put one probe here. And we're going to put one probe here. And I'm reading 0 volts. I'm not reading 3.0. I'm reading 0 volts. That's a new button. I took this button from a good working donor fob, and it did not make a difference. We are reading 0 volts. So we know that we have something going on. And no voltage here no voltage here because I did measure on the donor fob we should have 3 volts here, 3 volts here, 3 volts here, 3 volts here, 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 here we got 3 volts everywhere except for I think this one or this one we did not have voltage on this side or on that side of the component everywhere else was reading 3 volts that's what the donor board showed us so we have 0 volts here okay the second pin on the right is going to a via I flipped the board to see what's going on because that via is leading to back of the board. So if we look here, I noticed that we had corrosion between this point and this point. The second trace on the button, it connects right here. And we have a trace that goes all the way right here. We had corrosion. I measured in ohms mode from here to here and I got 8 ohms, which is a bit strange. We should have 0 ohms and not 8 ohms. We should not have anything more than 0 0.5 ohms or 1 ohm. I was reading 7, 8 ohms. So I put a wire. I connected this via here that connects right here. Flip the board. Right there, actually. From here to here. The wire is connected all the way to this trace, which in reality should go like this. But it doesn't matter if we have the wire like this or we have it like this. Same difference. Now... Look at this point. 
The point is connecting to a via. Flip the board and let's keep an eye on this area. Okay? Right there. The via is going right here. So we have the unlock button, which is the first line. We have the trunk button, which is the second line. And we have the lock button, which is the third line. I grinded the trace so I can measure voltage here. And we have zero volts. So the chip itself is not outputting three volts. We do have three volts on this line. We do have three volts on this line. But we have zero volts on this line. The problem lies here. We reflow the chip. And I checked the chip. I do not see any disturbance on the solder balls. But I did reflow the chip. I reflowed it nicely. And we still have zero volts at that trace. Now, we can remove the chip, reball the chip, and solder it back. I do not think that's the problem. I think the problem is the chip itself. But what if we remove the chip, we reball it, and put it back? It's a risky business. What if we put the chip back and the fob stopped working? The vehicle does not turn on anymore. Maybe that's the only key the customer has. Now his vehicle is stuck. He's not able to move the vehicle. He's not able to unlock the vehicle. Risky. Now we know the problem is the chip because we are getting zero volt here and the line is going right to the chip. I went online and I looked up Maxwell 711021 and I saw a couple of people, not a lot, maybe two people online asking about what is Maxwell 711021. No information whatsoever is available online on what that chip does or what that chip is. How can we work? How can we replace a chip if we do not even know what that chip is? Maybe that chip has nothing to do with the firmware. Maybe that chip is not serialized. Maybe that chip does not contain any information about the vehicle. Maybe that chip is replaceable. But I do not know what that chip is. If anybody out there has any information, about what that chip is, or if it can be replaced, let me know. Leave it down in the comments. I think the firmware, the VIN number, and all the vehicle's information is inside that chip. Appfel, and whatever number they have on the bottom here. I was not able to locate this chip either. So that's where we stand right now. The fob is functional. Let me put the motherboard inside the housing quick. I'm going to click on the unlock button, and you can see the light. If I press and hold the trunk button, you see the light. And if I press on the panic button, you see the light. But the lock button is not working. That's where we stand right now, and that's why I was not able to fix this fob, and that's why I hate or I do not like working on Vans key fobs that has the triangle panic button. They're all the same. All of them, you will come to the same conclusion. Now, if you look here, if I press on the unlock button, we have a signal, 314.9. If I press on the unlock or the trunk button, we have a signal. If I press, maybe I should do it like this. If I press on the lock button, we do not have a signal at all. And infrared, zero, nothing. If I press on the unlock button, we're going to have an infrared signal and you will see IR on the screen. And we have a frequency of 314.9. So the lock button is completely not working. Infrared is not working on that button. And frequency, nothing, zero. We're going to let the customer know that we were not able to fix his fob because of a chip that we cannot buy. When will we ever have parts for devices such as the Benz key fob? Right to repair, light at the end of the tunnel, no, no. We're going to end the video right here. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll do something else in the next video.